Live from the Al Roker Television Studio, this is WTOP 10 News at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Josh Kay. And I'm Samantha Damasio. Workers at the Dakin McQuay factory in Auburn set for closure will receive severance pay and a $1,000 bonus under a contract ratified today by members of the Steelworkers Union. Dakin McQuay, the world's largest maker of heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, announced last month that it will close its Auburn plant by the end of 2014 and move its operations to a large plant in Fayetteville, Tennessee. The plant employs almost 400 people, and the average worker at the plant has been employed there for more than 20 years. Layoffs will start at the end of August. Tonight's top story, the town of Oswego is receiving thousands of dollars in grants for multiple purposes. And bullying has resurfaced in the area, causing local parents to speak up. We'll have more on these top stories in just a minute. But first, a quick check of your weather outside with Chief Meteorologist Patrick Cavlin. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, not too bad out here right now. The showers that were falling earlier, they've kind of come to an end right now. We're under mostly cloudy skies, 37 degrees, so not as cold as what we've been seeing lately. And uh, the winds are pretty calm out here, so all in all, not a bad night. As we go through the overnight, those showers will end, and we may see a few breaks in the clouds, which will allow our temperatures to fall back into the upper 20s, probably around 28 degrees. As we look ahead, though, to the next three days, we got quite a mixed bag. Everything from cloudy weather to some snow showers on Friday. But once you get to Saturday, look at that. Our temperatures moderate for the first time in quite a while into the mid 40s with sunny conditions. Now, is this a sign of things to come? We'll have a full look at your forecast in just a few minutes. But right now, we'll send it back to Sam. New York State Senator Dan Maffei announced today that the town of Oswego Volunteer Fire Department will receive just under $40,000 in federal grants from assistance to Firefighters Grant Program. The important investment will help save lives and keep the community safe, Maffei said. Oswego Town Fire Chief Greg Herman says they will use the grant to purchase new equipment that will be used in cars and other emergency accidents. New York will spend $25 million bringing the internet to more than 150,000 households into rural parts of the state. The town of Parrish in Oswego County will get almost $2 million in new internet infrastructure for a town where 72% of the population does not have access to broadband or cable television. The money comes from competitive grants in the Governor's Connect New York Broadband Program. Overall, the projects will bring high-speed internet to 153,000 homes and 8,000 businesses. The mother of a five-year-old boy attending kindergarten at Altmar Parish Williamstown Elementary School is accusing the district of not doing enough to stop bullying. Beth Hummel posted a photograph of her son Kobe's bruised forehead to Facebook and the post created some anger through other parents in the district. Hummel claims that her son Kobe has been attacked three times by a group of fifth graders who call themselves the Teardrop Gang. APW Superintendent Gary Hudson says the situation has been contained. However, Hummel refuses to send her son back to school until she feels he is safe or remove him from the district entirely. In response to the ongoing bullying, an Oswego County mother who says she is fed up with her children and others being bullied is organizing an anti-bullying rally at a Fulton Park later this month. Heather Clark of Fulton says she started a Facebook page last week and received an overwhelming positive response. In addition to the rally, a support group is being put together for families facing bullying. Clark says she was bullied herself when she was young and that the effects can be long term. And two Twitter pages uh, where, where bullying students in the Cicero North Syracuse School District have been taken down. The North Syracuse School District is still investigating and says the students behind the bullying will be disciplined. Now, this has become a huge problem. We heard about it a lot last year, and now this is the first time where I'm hearing about it a lot, and it kind of hits home since it's happening locally. Right, and, and it's a problem that I think needs to be addressed not only locally, like you mentioned, but also on a national scale. And, and there are organizations. You know, I have a close, dear personal friend of mine who started an organization uh, to, you know, prevent uh, uh, bullying from happening. So it's good that there are some people out there that are helping out. Yeah, and hopefully we can reach out to him and maybe he can contact the school. Absolutely. And see what's going on. 
All right, so the price for higher education is tough to pay for many students, and that price may be on the rise. Kevin Carr is live with more on the story. State Higher Education Executive Officers Association has confirmed that the average tuition rate for public colleges and universities has gone up by 8.3 percent in the 2011 through 2012 school years as students were paying an average of about $5,189 per year. In comparison, in the 2010 through 2011 school year, that average was $4,793. And the justifications for these increases come with the lack of state support, as states are battling out of their own budget debts. Uh, tuition and fees have had to make up the difference, therefore colleges have had to increase them. Also, research and student aid fell by 9% last year, which is the lowest rate it has been at 25 years at $5,896 per year. The association president, Paul Ligenfechter, says that he hopes to see a recovery, but that no one should get their hopes up too high yet with the hole we have dug ourselves into, as he put it. Oswego's uh, semester tuition rate for in-state students, including fees, is just over $4,000. With room and board, it's $10,500. And while many colleges and universities do charge more money, it's still a large sum of cash for many students. And given the increase we saw last year, plus the shaky economy we still are in, students can expect to see both room and board rates and tuition rates to probably increase. Back to you guys at the desk. All right, thanks, Kevin. A West Hill High School senior who was killed when her vehicle crashed into a Centro bus early Saturday morning was laid to rest today. Family and friends of Anna Polino gathered at St. Margaret's Church in Mattydale to say goodbye to the 18-year-old girl. Classes at West Hill High School were canceled today in order for faculty and students to attend the services. Polino was an aspiring photographer who planned on studying at Savannah College of Art and Design. Police say they are still investigating the accident and testing has determined that alcohol was not a factor. The late season winter storm that rolled through the Midwest yesterday hit Washington, D.C. Early weather reports indicated that the nation's capital would be inundated with snowfall and fell short as barely any snow accumulated. On the other hand, the governor of Virginia declared a state of emergency with more than 200,000 people without power. Additionally, almost 1,000 flights have been canceled across Chicago. Some of the snow may reach our area late Thursday afternoon and into Friday morning. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Cavlin will have more on this approaching storm in his full forecast. Oswego will host its annual spring career fair tomorrow in Sweatman Gymnasium from 4 to 6 p.m. Employers from GEICO, Verizon Wireless, PepsiCo, and many others will be on hand to recruit for full-time postgraduate jobs as well as internships, co-ops, and volunteer opportunities. For more information, please call 315-312-2255. And if you've ever wondered where exactly your money is dispersed, you can attend the Student Fee Forum. Tomorrow, Thursday, March 7th, there will be a discussion about the use of revenues from the fees SUNY Oswego charges to all undergraduate students. These fees include the health fee, athletic fee, and technology fee. The forum will run from 7 to 8 p.m. in Lanigan, room 104. For more information, you can contact the email below. New York's minimum wage proposal has passed in the Assembly. And SUNY Oswego's sports viewership has skyrocketed. We'll have these stories after your full forecast when we come back. Stay tuned, you're watching WTOP 10 News. Sam Agapi. I'm Agapi. And you're watching, you're watching WTOP. WTOP. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Last night, Lori Capricuzzi scored two goals on Alia Brian Love. 
Joe, and he, Joe, Joe, get, get out. Adam, you're in. Lori Korpakovsky scored two goals on Ilya Brzgalov. Got it! Welcome back. So Washington, D.C. didn't see quite as much snow as they expected. I'm kind of hoping that's the case for us. We're not going to get as much. Springtime storms are extremely difficult to forecast because we have so many different dynamics going on in the atmosphere. Uh, as you get into the warmer months, you have a lot more warmer air in the atmosphere. And so mm -hmm. it makes the forecasting of where the snow line sets up particularly difficult. I'll talk more about that in a sec. Right now, let's take a look outside at Skycam 10. we got a beautiful shot out there this evening. Can't really see the sky conditions, but I can tell you there are some clouds out there. Fortunately, though, the rain showers have subsided, but you can see uh, the ground is a little wet out here, so it was uh, raining just a little bit earlier today, but that, again, has started to subside. Here are your top weather headlines. The showers end this evening, giving way to a few scattered snow showers later this week as that storm system passes towards our south. But look at that, guys. Warm up ahead, so I got a great forecast coming up for you for the weekend, at least. I don't know how long it'll last after that. Cloudy skies, 37 degrees right now. Calm winds, though, so it still feels like it's 37. As you take a look at the regional radar here, you can see those showers that passed by our area uh, earlier. Just nuisance showers. They've kind of passed off towards the south and west right now. This, though, this is the main system as we pull out and take a wider look here. You can see really just confined to the coast, and I think it's going to stay that way at least for the next 24 hours. As we head into tomorrow night, though, that's when stuff gets interesting. You can see here... Really complicated. It's a real complicated system. But on the back end of it, that's where you're going to get the snow. Okay, as the cold air starts to wrap in from Canada, we're going to see snow showers in our area, but the heavy snow along the I 95 corridor stretching from New York City up towards Boston. And the storm, it's not going to go anywhere fast. We got a blocking pattern in place here around the Nova Scotia and the Canadian Maritimes, and that's going to keep the storm from moving north. Instead, it's going to slowly, ever so slowly, track towards the east. And what that means for us is that we're going to be socked into the clouds right through the end of the week. Uh, snowfall forecast, it's changed a little bit. Of course, that's what happens in these storms. Very dynamic, a lot of stuff going on. I'm still sticking with the one to three frost. Not really expecting a lot of snow, but on the back end of this, man, the western suburbs of Boston could really get hammered upwards of six to nine inches of snow. So for tonight, showers ending early, mostly cloudy skies, 28 degrees. For the day tomorrow, going out to those 8 a.m. classes, mostly cloudy, 29 degrees, a chilly start, but we do moderate a little bit into the mid-30s. 32 by lunchtime with a few peaks of sun, but then as we go through the evening hours, 5 o'clock, a few snow showers cannot be ruled out as that storm passes to our south. I'll time it out for you, 7 a.m., high and dry here. The same thing for around lunchtime, but as we head towards dinner time, that rush hour commute, don't be surprised if you see a few renegade snow showers associated with this system down here. Here's the good news. This is what you've been waiting for, right? That warm-up. When's spring coming? This weekend, the jet stream, just a river of air that flows aloft that separates the colder air from the hint of spring, the warmer air. And this weekend, it'll be shifting its way north and east. And man, we got some nice conditions coming up in that Storm Team 10 five-day forecast. We just have to get through the end of this week. A little bit unsettled with cooler temperatures. But look at this. Saturday and Sunday, sunny skies. I cannot remember the last time I was able to give this kind of a forecast. That's your pick day of the week is Saturday. Sunday, we moderate into the mid-50s before cooling down a little bit on Monday. And remember, you can follow us online on Twitter by following at WTOP10 on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com forward slash WTOP10TV, or you can email us any questions, comments, or maybe even some other photos that you might have around campus or around the county. So just hang in there until the weekend, and we should be good. Certainly, I, uh, I'm getting teased back and forth, winter, spring, winter, spring. <laughs> that's what so happens. That full spring we're, in a, we're in the transition season here. Once we get through March and into April, that's when you should start seeing some more consistent weather here in central New York. All right, sounds good. So we're going to hear the sniffles a little bit more in class, Just a little so bit more, we yeah. We can get through it. All right, thanks, Pat. Sure. Turning to state news now, the New York Assembly passed legislation that extends the block on high-volume hydraulic fracking until May 2015. 
The block, which has been in place since late 2008, prevents the pumping of chemical-laced water in sand below the surface to extract natural gas from shale. The current legislation set to expire applies to Utica and Marcellus shale, some of the most significant deposits in the country. The vote in the New York State Assembly to raise New York's minimum wage passed as expected by a wide margin. Assemblyman Bill McGee was one of only three Democratic lawmakers who voted against the proposal yesterday. Democrats outnumbered Republicans by two to one. The Assembly's bill increases the wage from $7.25 to $9 an hour. Governor Andrew Cuomo's budget would increase it to $8.75. The man who fled a deadly hit and run turned himself in to authorities Wednesday. Julio Acevedo was in a fatal hit and run accident killing Razy Goldberg, her husband, and their six month pregnant child. Derek Hamilton, a friend of Acevedo, arranged the surrender in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, three days after the initial crash. This story, which has picked up by national news, continues to develop through authorities still unsure if they will have more charges to hand out to Acevedo. Airline passengers will now be allowed to carry small knives and sporting equipment on planes beginning next month. The knives must have blades that are 6 centimeters or shorter and less than half an inch in width. The announcement yesterday by the Transportation Security Administration drew an immediate outcry from unions representing flight attendants and other airline workers. The union says T the TSA's decision to drop its prohibition on passengers carrying the items on board was made for the convenience of the agency's screeners, not the safety of the traveling public. The changes will take effect April 25th. A full look at sports coming up after the break. And later, a Red Army soldier who went missing in action in 1980 has been found alive after 33 years. But first, take a look at your late night menu. Stay tuned, you're watching WTOP 10 News. Sam McGuffey. I'm McGuffey. And you're watching, you're watching WTOP. In the Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. In this special edition of Munchies in Minutes, Julia's sponsor from Bongiorno & Associates will be the star. Big Neely will be making clam dip. Hope you're hungry. Hey Munchies and Minutes fans, today we're making some clam dip with my sponsor from Bongiorno & Associates. Hey, welcome to Big Neely's Kitchen. Tonight we're going to make a quick snack, a hot clam dip. First thing you do is saute some butter in a, in a hot pan. Put the onions in. Saute our onions. They need to be prepared till it's lightly translucent. For those of you who are taking liberal arts here at the college, it means see-through. And one of the things we could do to accomplish that is to add our extra virgin olive oil. Not that you're going to have too many virgins in this college. Okay, now you can see that the onions are perfectly translucent. We have a nice base of butter and olive oil. We're going to add two cans of minced clams, very important, with the clam juice. Now, 
Make sure you get all the clams out. Your parents are paying a lot of money for this tuition. And then you bring this to a boil. Nice, perfect, just like mama makes. Now we've come to a complete boil. You shut the flame off. At this point, we're gonna add the breadcrumb. Don't ask me how much breadcrumb we're gonna put in. I've never measured anything. I've been very lousy in math since the third grade. Mix it in. And our goal here is to create a pasty substance with the clams, the butter, and the olive oil. We're going to add Pecorino Romano cheese. That's a main ingredient. If you don't use Pecorino Romano, you might as well, you're wasting your time. You might as well eat your shoe. It's to your preference, your liking. If you're Irish, you put one handful. If you're Italian, you put two to three. It must be in a greased pan. Then you take all your mixture that you made on top of the stove and you put it into your pan that you're going to bake in the oven. Spread it around evenly in the bake pan. Nice greasy cholesterol mix. I've already preheated my oven at 350 degrees. We're gonna now place this into the oven. We'll bake it for roughly 20 minutes. It's been in the oven now 20 minutes. We're gonna take it out and we'll see how it looks. Ah, perfect, golden brown, just the way we want it. Okay, we're gonna bring it over to here. See, everything tastes better when it's plated correctly. So, we're gonna take it out of our pan. Plate it in a nice bowl with a nice presentation. It's time to taste our little creation. So That's a big helping, Neil. I'm a big guy. I know. There you go, nice. Jules. Try that. I'll try mine. Mm. Excellent. So by now, you can tell I'm not only the eye candy of the show, I'm also the talent. Julia, please close us out. This was Big Neely's Kitchen and Munchies in Minutes. I'll take it back to the news desk. That was amazing. My cousin Neil is one of my favorite people he in the entire planet. He is a character. Planet. Oh, I need to meet him. Oh, he's fabulous. He was here last weekend. Everybody missed him. <laughs> I love it. And my dad would love that, so I have to go home and make that for him. Oh, it's so, so easy and so, so delicious. Looks it. All right, Sam, get this. So last Saturday, the men's ice hockey team here in Oswego hosted Plattsburgh in the Suniac Ice Hockey Championship. WTOP had coverage of the game, and it broke some records. It was the most viewed production that we have ever had here at WTOP for one night in the station. 300, 510,000 people viewed the game. That saw the Lakers defeat the Cardinals 4-0. Just one more thing, not only to be proud of, to be the part of the broadcast, but it certainly is something to, as an entire station, not only the on-camera people, but the people who are behind the scenes working as well. Absolutely, and we, we were talking about that earlier this morning with Tosti. Um, he was our entertainment segment, right. but just talking about how much of a difference it's been. And even with the show, Ted News, the show, you know? Right. So, and the fact that we won, you know? It's yeah. just a great addition to that. Absolutely. So. Well, Mike has more on this uh, past weekend's game. So let's take a further look at sports uh, with Mike Tanzini. the Suniac playoffs and now it's time for the big show. The 24-3-0 Lakers men's hockey team are heading to Michigan to take on the 21-1-3 Adrian Bulldogs. Oswego coach Ed Gosick says, quote, there is no more tricks up the sleeves, unquote. Gosick also went on to say that he likes the team's chances of advancing to the Frozen Four. The team is led by 14 seniors including Suniac tournament MVP goaltender Andrew Hare. The game will be played Saturday at 7 p.m. in Adrian. Well, spring sports are underway, and today the Lakers men's lacrosse team defeated Utica on the road by a score of 10-7. With the game tied going into the final period, Oswego senior Cody Baltzer propelled the Lakers with three of his five goals in the fourth quarter. The Lakers outshot the Pioneers 47-27. The men's lacrosse team will hit the field on Saturday against Adrian College. That game will be played at 11 a.m. in Lemoyne. Two players from the Syracuse football team have been arrested after being caught on tape stealing from South Campus. Junior Devon Walls and Marcus Pierce Brewster are being accused of stealing over $900 in electronics, including an Xbox, a 19-inch television, and multiple iPods. Two other students were involved in the burglaries but are not Syracuse athletes. Bail for the students is set at $5,000 cash or $10,000 bond. Now for some lighter news in Syracuse basketball. Today, the, men, or excuse me, the men's basketball team 
uh, ended their three-game losing streak tonight by defeating DePaul 78-57. Senior James Sutherland had a big game on senior night with 22 points and 10 rebounds. C.J. Farrell also chipped in with 16 points of his own. The Orange have one more regular season game as they will hit the road and travel to Georgetown for a 12 p.m. tip-off against the Hoyas on Saturday. And finally tonight, the World Baseball Classic is underway and Team USA is slated to play on Sunday against Mexico. Unfortunately, Yankee slugger Mark Teixeira will not be making the trip. The Yankees announced today that Teixeira will be sidelined for 8 to 10 weeks with a strained wrist. With Phil Hughes, A-Rod, and Granderson already injured, this is certainly a big blow to an already injury-plagued team. The Kansas City Royals first baseman Eric Hosmer will be replacing Teixeira on the Team USA roster. Well, that will do it for sports tonight. Now let's take it back to the news desk. All right, thanks, Mike. We need to take one last break, but we'll be back in just 90 seconds with the lighter side of news. Stay tuned. You're watching WTOP 10 News. MBA program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. <laughs> Welcome back. Now let's take a look at some more stories. A former Red Army soldier who went missing in action in 1980 during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan has been found alive almost 33 years after he was rescued by Afghan tribesmen. Bahatim Khatimov now lives under the name Sheikh Abdallah and works as a traditional healer in West Afghanistan. He received a heavy wound to the head in the course of a battle in the Shahan district in September 1980 when he was picked up by local residents. He was found by a team from Warrior Internationalist Affairs Committee. In America, the Harlem Shake may be the top pop single, but in Egypt and Tunisia, it's a different song and dance. Leaders are beginning to tremble as it becomes a potent symbol of protest, revolt, and defiance. Kids in the video at a school in, a, in Tunisia danced to the song and posted their exploits on YouTube. The video prompted a quarter of a million hits and reports of an investigation has prompted a backlash with video after video. And Egypt authorities went further and the backlash was worse. Four pharmaceutical students were arrested for doing this Harlem Shake in front of the pyramids. Late in the week in Cairo, there was a mass Harlem Shake in front of the Muslim Brotherhood headquarters. To protest before the arrest, one popular remix of a video in Egypt appeared to show police officers getting in on the act. All right, and before we say goodnight, one final look at your forecast with meteorologist Patrick Kavlin. All right, thanks, guys. Take a look at those graphics. Look at that. Daylight savings time. We lose an hour of sleep, but we gain an hour of daylight in the evening. Don't forget to set those clocks ahead one hour <clears throat> Saturday night into Sunday morning. There's your five-day forecast. Saturday, the Storm Team 10 pick day of the week. Temperatures moderating into the mid-50s by Sunday. All right, and that'll do it for us here tonight. For the de entire 10 News team, I'm Samantha Damasio. And I'm Josh Kay. Stay tuned for whatever's coming up next with Mike DeWolf. Good night, Oswego.